ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीरयत नष्टप्रायेशुद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णे स्वधामोपगते धनमज्ञानाधि सह कलौ नष्टृषा पुराणारको धुनोदित ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो सेवन चैप्टर नाइन टेक्स्ट नंबर फोर्टीन दिस चैप्टर इज एंटाइटल्ड Prahlad pacifies the Lord with prayers. Please repeat. Tat yatcha manyam asura cha hata tvaya adya modet sadhu api vrishchak sarp. हत्या लोका च निर्वृतमिता प्रतियती सर्वे रूपम नृसिंह विभयाय जना स्मती तद्यमुमसुरश्च हतस्वयाद्य मोदेत साधुर विवृश्चक सर्प हत्या लोकाश निर्वृतमिता प्रतियंति सर्वे रूपम नृसिंह विभयाय जना स्मरती तद्यमुमसुरश्च हतस्वयाद्य मोदेत साधुर विवृश्चक सर्प हत्या लोकाश्च निर्वृतमिता प्रतियंति सर्वे रूपम नृसिंह विभयाय जना स्मरती तद्यमुमसुरश्च हतस्वयाद मोदेत साधुर विवृश्चक सर्प हत्या लोकाश निवृतमिता प्रतियंति सर्वे रूपम नृसिंह विभयाय जना स्मरती तेर फोर यंडली गिव अप मन्यम योर एंगर असुरा माय फादर हिरण्य कशिपु द ग्रेट डीमन च ऑल्सो हत किल्ड त्वया बाय यू अद्य टुडे मोदेत टेक प्लेजर साधु Api, even a saintly person, vrishchika sarpa hatya, by killing a snake or a scorpion, lokaha, all the planets, jam, indeed, 
Nirvratan pleasure Etaha have achieved Pratiyanti are waiting for pacification of your anger Sarve all of them Rupam this form Narasingha O Lord Narasingha Deva Vibhayaya for mitigating their fear Janaha all the people of the universe Smananti will remember Translation My Lord Narasingha Dev please therefore cease your anger now that my father the great demon Hiranyakashipu has been killed since even saintly persons take pleasure in the killing of a scorpion or a snake all the worlds have achieved great satisfaction because of the death of this demon now they are confident of their happiness and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation in order to be free from fear please repeat my Lord Narasimha Deva Please, Please, therefore, therefore cease, your cease your anger. Now that my father, now that my father the great demon Hiranyakashipu, has, has been killed. Since even saintly persons, saintly persons take, pleasure take pleasure in the killing of a scorpion or a snake, the a snake all the worlds. Have achieved great satisfaction because of the death of this demon now they are confident of their happiness and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation in order to be free from fear Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Savior of the Modern World, Srila Prabhupada Ki. The most important point in this verse is that although saintly persons never desire the killing of any living entity, they take pleasure in the killing of envious living entities like snakes and scorpions Hiranyakashipu was killed because he was worse than a snake or a scorpion and therefore everyone was happy now there was no need for the Lord to be angry the devotees can always remember the form of Narasimha Hadeva when they are in danger. And therefore the appearance of Narasimha Hadeva was not at all inauspicious. The Lord's appearance is always worshipable and auspicious for all sane persons and devotees. Om Ajnana Timiranta Syagnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guroho Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcham Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savathutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam he Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute 
तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमामि हरे प्रिये वांछा कल्पतरुप्यश्च कृपासिंधुभ्य एवच पतितानाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे तद यु असुर तस्वयाद्य मोदे तसाधुरपि वृष्टिक सर्प हत्या लोकाश्च निवृतमिता प्रतियंति सर्वे रूपम नरसिंह विभयाय जना स्मरति माय लॉर्ड नरसिंह देव प्लीज देर फॉर सीस योर एंगर नाउ दट माय फादर द ग्रेट डीम इन हिरण्य कशिपू हैज बिन किल्ड सिंस इवन सेंटली पर्सन टेक प्लेजर इन द किलिंग ऑफ अ स्कॉर्पियन और अ स्नेक All the worlds have achieved great satisfaction because of the death of this demon. Now they are confident of their happiness, and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation in order to be free from fear. Shila Prabhupada told the story that uh, I think it was in 1933. He, he was in the Chaitanya Math in Mayapur, and there was a snake. Cobra, I think, black snake, and the devotees didn't know what to do. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was standing on the balcony, looking down on the scene, and he said, "Kill it." And Shila Prabhupada at that time had some doubt. He said he had some doubt in his mind. This is a saintly person. How he can ask it? We kill this living entity, Dhamavasi. Don't forget, we're pure vegetarians. We're very sensitive about life, but this is the instruction. So this is the point. He said later on, when he was studying this verse in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, he found this line: "Mo de ta sadhu rabi vrishcha ka sarpa hatya." Even a sadhu becomes delighted. When a snake or a scorpion is killed, so this has been explained in various ways. <clears throat> First of all, there are many things we can appreciate here, many points. Uh, before we get to what Shri Prabhupada has identified in his purport as the most important point, so one point preliminary. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj is offering these prayers spontaneously. How old is he? Five. You know any five-year-olds who can speak like this in Sanskrit? He had received the mercy of Bhagavan Narasimha, so that he was even able to think like this is amazing, actually. And what is he praying for? What is the nature of all of his prayers? If we study this chapter very carefully, which we should, because Shri Prabhupada, as we heard the other day, he he used to speak mostly from this section of the Bhagavatam. What was he praying for? He's not praying for anything personally. What is he praying for here? He wants the Lord to give up his anger. Why? So that devotees will not be afraid. He's thinking of others. This is the greatness of his character. So his prayers are spontaneous, and yet they're so profound. We we can't even think like this. What to speak of articulate the such prayers? What to speak of doing so in Sanskrit? So therefore, we worship Prahlad, Prahlad Narasimha. Throughout Iskon, Shila Prabhupada has actually instituted the worship of Narasimha Dev and uh, Prahlad. It's like in Mayapur, Prahlad Narasimha, uh, glorious, glorious devotee, very great soul from whom we should learn how to be a servant, how to be a bhakta. 
Bhakta Prahlad, Bhakta Vara Prahlad, the best of all the devotees. So, in these prayers, another thing we can notice is that Prahlad Maharaj repeatedly recognizes his own position. What is his position? I'm talking about his social position. He, he's very conscious of the fact that he's a demon. He's not um, agitating for equal rights. He's not organizing demon pride marches. He's not, uh, he's not irritated by this uh, lesser status that he, that he finds himself in. In fact, he, he keeps saying again and again throughout this chapter, although I am a demon, although I'm a demon, still I can be a devotee. So that's one thing to note. Uh, do we think like this? We, we don't do so enough. <laughs> Because even if we're descending from someone whose name was Gautama or Bharadvaja or Vishishta, there are so many, even still in this part of the world, we can still find direct descendants of these great sages. Um, but do we act like them now? And did our forefathers, immediate parents and grandparents, did they act to represent that august tradition as well? That we have to ask. Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Abhyam Nama, Shri Shri Krishna Balarama Abhyam Nama, Shri Shri Lalita Vishakha Sahita Radha Shyama Sundara Abhyam Nama. So that's another point that Prahlad is very humble and uh, he's, he's very, he considers himself most unqualified. In fact, it's only because somebody else pushed him into this position that he's even speaking to the Lord at all. This is a fact. So his prayers are so deep and this prayer in particular it, it actually resonates to some degree with another prayer offered by himself from the fifth canto, very famous verse for those who read Srila Prabhupada's books. Nowadays nobody reads any, any books, what to speak of Srila Prabhupada's books. I was in a doctor's office in America sometime recently and I was reading a book. <laughs> And the doctor came out and said, you're reading a book? <laughs> People don't read. And certainly they don't read Srila Prabhupada's books. Even we don't read Srila Prabhupada's books. That's been confirmed by a couple of surveys, if I'm not mistaken, uh, performed with ISKCON leaders, as a matter of fact, in Mayapur. Uh, you can read the Vyas Puja offerings of His Holiness Keshava Bharti Goswami, for the last two or three or four years uh, in, in order to find more information about this. But anyway, that's, I don't want to divert too much. In chapter 18 of the fifth canto, text number nine, Prahlad gives a very beautiful verse and we'll try to say something about that as well, a little bit later maybe. So, Srila Prabhupada, in this verse, he says the most important point is that although saintly persons never desire the killing of any living entity, they take pleasure in the killing of envious living entities like snakes and scorpions. And I assume that means wasps also. Because Jayadev Goswami is, we're singing every morning, no? Tavakara kamalavare nakhamat bhutashringam dalita hiranyakashiputana bringam He's like a wasp and he's been bifurcated by the Lord. So, this is confirmed by Vira Raghava Acharya in his commentary on, commentary on this verse, as well as Vijay Dwaj Tirtha from two August Vaishnava Sampradayas, Sri and Madhva line, respectively. Here, Sarpa, Vrishtika Sarpa Idyadi means anyone who is like them, anyone who is like a snake or a scorpion. So, what is the primary characteristic of a snake. This is famous in our Shastras. What is a snake known for? What is the primary characteristic of a snake? Envious. Very envious. Envious snake. What are some examples we find in our books? Kaliya serpent. Kaliya serpent was polluting the Yamuna with envy and had also offended even before that Garuda. <laughs> It's a long story, I don't want to dilate too much, but our Acharyas have pointed out that in particular Kaliya serpent, being a serpent, had this characteristic, very envious. And let the, yet the Lord was so kind to Kaliya. 
an, an unbelievable, actually inconceivable kindness. According to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the, the degree of kindness that the Lord showed Kaliya was not commensurate to his character at all. He actually should have been completely wiped out, like Hiranyakashipu, and yet the Lord was very kind to him. That means that we all have a choice, we all have a chance of some sort, those of us who are envious. So, what is envy? Uh, Sridhar Swami in his Bhavarta Deepika has defined envy for us. Srila Prabhupada has explained it like this in several occasions as well. Parod karshasahi. When you're unable to tolerate somebody else shining, that is envy. Parod karsha. Para utkarsha asahya. When it is intolerable to you that someone else is looking good, this is envy. This is envy. So the snake personifies envy. There are, we hear from conventional wisdom, there are six that can kill you at any time. Fire, a sudden fire breaks out, especially if you live in a place like, say, Chani Chok in Delhi. If a fire breaks out there, there's nothing you can do and you can be killed very quickly. A fool can also kill you. Be careful who you associate with. Water can kill you, especially if you're Indian, because Indians never know how to swim. <laughs> and governments can kill you. Women can kill you. And a snake can kill you. Today we're talking about snakes. It's been said that a snake is... Um, when you compare a snake and a, and a rascal, an envious person, actually the snake is in the better position. Why? Because a snake will only bite you at a certain kala. Everybody, those who know Jyotish, they understand what is kala. Certain time that is meant for the dispensation of your bad karma, at that time only the snake can bite you. Because it's faded, that is to say. But if you associate with an envious person, that person will hurt you at every step. And similarly, in a snake, the poison is found only in the fangs. That is to say, the snake emanates only from the fangs. But in a rascal, in an envious person, the venom is all-pervading everywhere in his, in his person, you see? Therefore, it's said, Sarpa kruda kalaha kruda Sarpat kruda tadaha kala That the snake is very cruel. And the envious person is also very cruel. But of the two, the envious person is more cruel than a snake. This is why Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport, Hiranyakashipu was killed because he was worse than a snake or a scorpion. Mantra shadhivasha sarpa, a snake can be pacified somehow by, say, some mantra or maybe by some sort of antidote, medicine. But, kala uh, kena nevaryate, what are you going to do when you're dealing with an envious person? What can you do? Therefore it says here, modeta sadhura pivrishtika sarpa hatya. An envious person has to be killed. Now, <laughs> this of course raises the obvious question. And Sridhar Swami's commentary also implies the same question. So, then do saints, they, they enjoy killing others? Should we, iskan devotees, should we go around killing other people who are envious? If, we, if so, we would have to kill ourselves first. <laughs> there are some tamasic faiths in this world. They actually believe that it's their dharma to, to go around killing people who don't agree with them. So... <coughs> The answer is given, I mean, even though, even though the Acharyas say that a snake here in this context, snake, a scorpion, wasp, what have you, it, it means a person who is like that, anyone who is envious. So, <coughs> Sridhar Swami says, Paropa Dravakari, a snake is, the nature of an envious snake is manifest in its activities. What are the activities? Para Upadravakari. This snake is constantly giving 
harassment to other people. Srila Prabhupada explains, even you don't do anything wrong, because the snake is envious, it will bite. You're sleeping at night. This happened to someone that I know. And the snake will enter the room and bite, for, with no provocation at all. This is envy. So such people do exist in the world. We have to process that in our Catholic moments, in our more liberal moments. We like to envision a world full of people who are inherently good. But according to Madhvacharya and many others, authorities, there are such evil people in this world. And the best thing for them is to be killed. <laughs> but we cannot do that. It's not our position to do that. So, <coughs> Narasinga Dave has killed uh, Hiranyakashipu here. Uh, the answer is that no, saints don't enjoy killing other people, but the saints become happy even when uh, uh, envious snake like uh, demons are killed. And we have an example of this from Srila Prabhupada's life. Does anybody know what I'm thinking of? Huh? Mr. Nair. We don't mean to mention any names like Nair, but his name was Nair. He was killed by Krishna. And it was a long struggle. You all know the story. We don't have time to dilate on that. Hopefully we'll get a book from Giridad Swami in the near future about the whole Mumbai struggle to establish ISKCON in Juhu Beach, Mumbai. Srila Prabhupada saw that land 30 years before and he thought this would be a place for a temple. Even in those days it was a jungle, there was nothing out there. And now it's in the middle of the city. So he wanted to build that temple and when he got the opportunity he, he moved in, he started. And Mr. Nair was cheating. In so many ways he was abusing the devotees and he had done so to other people in the past in exactly the same way that Kaliya had done so to others in the past. Kaliya Nag. So, then one day Giridad Swami was, I think he was downtown in Mumbai and he saw the newspaper announcing that Mr. Nair had died. So he was astonished and he came straight to Srila Prabhupada and showed him what had happened. And Prabhupada said, Hare Krishna! He said, I was praying that this rascal would be dispatched. <laughs> Prabhupada actually told the devotees on that occasion to <laughs> organize a feast and celebrate. <laughs> so, sadhur, this is the idea. Modeta sadhur apivrishtika sarpahatya. When such a person is killed, even a sadhu becomes happy. And Jiva Goswami has explained in his commentary on this verse, uh, as well as Vishnat Chakravarti Thakur, that just because the sadhu says this is good, therefore we accept it. Only for that reason. This is the anushtita. It is, it is established by the sadhu's approval that this is not a, a cause for, this is any kind of criticism or doubt. Okay. So then uh, Sridhar Swami raises another question. The Lord might consider that if this is good, then should I not give up my anger? And therefore we have the third line. The first question was answered by the second line. That uh, do the sadhus enjoy killing other people? No, but they do enjoy when an envious demon is killed, an, uh, an envious snake-like demon. And for your information, Srila Prabhupada did call other persons in this world envious snakes without mentioning any names. Here in Vrindavan, as a matter of fact, many, many years ago. So then the next question is, should I, if this is good, then should I remain angry? And so Prahlad answers that, he anticipates that question and answers, no, sarve pratiyanti. They, to all of them it is evident that your anger is auspicious. Lokashya Therefore they've all become happy as a result of your activity. Okay, so then the Lord might consider that then uh, if I maintain my anger, he's, he's not convinced yet, if I maintain my anger, then the devotees will be assured that I'm here for them, I will protect them. As we've heard from Bhagavad Gita chapter 4, uh, anybody know the verses? Yada, yada? Ityadi. So he's coming to establish dharma and he's coming to wipe out the miscreants. 
the devotees will be assured of this if, if the Lord maintains his anger. So then Prahlad, the, so Narsingadev might present this doubt to Prahlad. And therefore Prahlad answers with the fourth line of the verse, Rupam Narasingha Vibhayaya Janaha Smaranti. And the way that Srila Prabhupada has translated it here, it's more or less a, a prediction or maybe even a benediction. Uh, now they are confident of their happiness and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation in order to be free from fear. This is his answer. No, it's not necessary for you to maintain your anger because all we have to do, according to Vishwanath Shakavarti Thakur and Jeev Goswami, all we have to do is remember Lord Narasimha Dev and immediately everything becomes auspicious. He says, uh, if we just remember Lord Narasimha Dev, then the demons become terrified and they're automatically destroyed. In a world where everyone is remembering Lord Narasimha Dev, how can the demons cause any problem? They cannot do well. They only thrive when we forget, when we turn away, when we become ishad apeta, uh, parangmukha, turned away from the Lord. So this is the idea. This is how the Sridhar Swami explains this verse. Rupam Narasinga. My dear Lord Narasinga, just by remembering this form, everyone will be uh, assured. Vibhayaya, this, this remembrance itself is, is sufficient for the purpose of becoming fearless. Okay, so I mentioned already that uh, Jeev Goswami also, one more thing he says here is, prasada syavasaro ayam natu manyoriti bhava. The idea here his nicely summarizes that this anger of the Lord, it's not occasioned by anger really. It's actually just an occasion to give mercy, give mercy, in accordance with that dictum that he gives in Bhagavad Gita. I establish dharma and I destroy a religion wherever and whenever I find it. Okay, so I mentioned already that in the fifth canto, this famous verse, Swasti astu vishvasya khala prasidatam jayantu bhutani shivam mithodhya it's very, very deep verse, and also from Prahlad Maharaj, and it resonates quite well with today's verse. What does he pray? Swasti astu vishvasya. May the entire universe be auspicious. This is the same end result that we see in today's verse. The entire universe. Lokashti nirvratamita has become auspicious and happy. So, in their commentaries on that verse, the Acharyas have raised the doubt. Someone might consider that if we're wishing well on the entire universe, then are we not empowering the rascals within it <laughs> also? <laughs> Therefore, he says, kala prasidatam. But those who are kala, we've already discussed. What does kala mean? Rascal, envious miscreant. Remember we quoted the verse already. He's more cruel than a snake, the kala, the envious person. May all the envious persons therefore be pacified. So then <coughs> the question arises, well if, how are we going to pacify the envious persons? Manasya bhadram bhajat, well, I'm sorry, um, jayantu bhutani shivam mithodhya May they all think of one another's welfare. How in the world can an envious person think of the welfare of another person? Generally we find that when a person is envious, what delights them more than anything else is to see the downfall of those that they envy. Isn't it? Para dukkha sukhi. You see? So, how in the world are they going to come to the point of thinking of each other's welfare? Then he answers with the third line. Manascha bhadram bhajatadad hokshaje. By worshipping that transcendental supreme personality of Godhead, their minds become completely infused with auspiciousness. Just as we hear in the Shruti Mantra, bhadram karne bhi deva ityadi. May you hear only auspicious things, may you see only auspicious things, may you touch, speak, smell, taste, etc. Only auspicious things. What happens as a result of that? 
then your mind becomes automatically auspicious. Then you're able to offer auspicious prayers as eloquently as Prahlad Maharaj has done here. Bhajatara <coughs> And he says, Aveshyatam no matir api ahaitaki. May we become more and more deeply absorbed in this mood. May we become more and more deeply absorbed in this mood. How do we develop this pure devotion? What is the characteristic of this pure devotion? It is emphasized by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his commentary on this verse. He says, it is characterized by this ahaituki nature. There has to be no hetu. What does hetu mean? Hetu means a cause or a motive. If you've got an agenda, it's not going to work. It, you have to be completely selfless. Then that devotion will very quickly purify your heart. Then you can think nicely of other people as Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita. Na shochati na kangshati samasarveshu bhuteshu without envy. Only when you're non-envious can you see all living entities equally. Otherwise you're calculating this one can help me, that one can hurt me. You see? So Ahaituki Bhakti has this power to, to raise us to this level. And Prahlad Maharaj again, just as we see throughout this chapter, in this verse also, what does he say? Aveshyatam naha, even us, matira api. Api, the word api is used here. Even me, may even my mind also become purified by this process of Bhakti Yoga. Why is he saying even my mind? Again, he's conscious. I'm just a demon. I'm only a demon. Born demon, proven. Let's see, long, long line of demons I come from. He's conscious of this. We have to be so conscious. We have to be so conscious. Failure, they say, is the pillar of success. You see? Okay. So, um, maybe there's more that we can say about this. Uh, Kaliya serpent is another example. This Vidyadhara who attacked Nanda Maharaj, tried to swallow him. He was in the form of a serpent. How did he become a serpent? Does anyone know? He offended Angiras Muni. He was a Vidyadhara. He was very, very well known throughout the universe. And he was traveling far and wide. He was exceedingly beautiful. And because of that, he was very proud. And because of his pride, he saw Angira Muni, and Angira Muni is not known to be very beautiful, a little bit like Vyasdev. And so he was laughing at Angira Muni, and Angira Muni cursed him. You should, you're so envious, you should take birth as a snake. And that's exactly what happened. But like Narad Muni's curse to the sons of Kuvera, the curse of Angira did not go in vain. And uh, he was such a snake that Krishna touched him with his lotus foot and freed him from that birth, as envious snake birth, even though he tried to swallow his father. <laughs> Krishna showed again exceeding kindness. Of all the incarnations, Rupa Goswami describes in his Lagu Bhagavatamritam, Krishna is the most kind of them all. Krishna is the most kind. And we see this again and again. Putana is another example. This Vidyadhara is another example. Kaliya, I mentioned already, is another example. So many times Krishna is so kind. Therefore we have some hope. And this Rupa Goswami calls it hope against hope. Even though I'm a demon, like Prahlad Maharaj, even though I don't have any background in pious activities, Sanatan Goswami says, I have no knowledge, I'm not even born in a good family. And I have no inclination, I'm not even attached to the process of developing love for Krishna. Still, I maintain this hope against hope, and that somehow or other, Durghata Ghatane Vidhatri, he says in his, uh, one of his songs, Rupa Goswami, your mercy is able to make impossible things happen. This is what we're all banking on. And we're not so much banking on Krishna's mercy because we know that Sometimes a person very, very ardently worships Krishna, and yet Krishna has other priorities. Therefore, we put, we're putting our faith in Srimati Radharani. We take shelter of her because she's 
In a sense, you can say she's one of us. What does that mean? It means she knows what it's like to be a devotee and she knows how Krishna is. Sometimes Krishna is a little bit hard, even with her. She knows this. So she can sympathize with us. And if we gain her mercy, then <coughs> we have some chance. Then we have a real hope against hope. Okay, I'm going to stop here, but if anybody has any questions or any comments, we can maybe discuss. Um, Shubha Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Is this related to today's class? I think I'm going to prioritize any questions about today's class and then we can talk about that if no one has any. Badri Narayan Maharaj. <coughs> Yeah. And Prabhupada said one time in class, he said, everyone is going back to Godhead. And he paused for a minute and said, except for Mr. Nair. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is this. Um, you said that the snake will only bite you a certain time. And an envious person, you know, you'll never know what they're going to do. They're always going to show. So if the snake is just biting you a certain time, <laughs> that's true that's true I, in that sense it's true but uh, <coughs> what the acharyas say in their commentaries on this verse is that because the snake is by nature always harming other people only therefore it's good to remove such elements from society in some sense you can extrapolate that you never really remove them you just kind of put them somewhere else <laughs> that is that is death and rebirth in this world so you know real real mercy comes when you can reform someone and Srila Prabhupada was able to do that with so many even snake-like people who approach Srila Prabhupada and of course this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, the extreme mercy Krishna's mercy on steroids, you can say. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so kind. So, <coughs> we can hope to get the mercy of Sri Sri Guru Gauranga if we try to act as the agents of the Lord's mercy and do something on his behalf such that he, we, we draw his attention. If we can somehow turn someone's mind to Krishna Bhakti. What a great accomplishment that is. After so many millions and billions of lifetimes, who knows how long, if we can bring someone, that is such a great thing, especially an envious person. Sometimes it happens, because envy is just a flip side of love. It's perverse love, perverted love. Is that okay? Anything else? Yes, Prabhuji. I'm not sure I understand the question, sorry. Yes. 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 Well, this is, this is the difference between our own 
opinion of ourselves and the opinion of others. A devotee for himself always feels himself to be the most fallen non-devotee, rascal number one. The devotee will always feel like that. But another person may correctly glorify you as a great devotee. So this is the, this is the paradox of devotional service. The same person, everyone else sees him as a great devotee, but he sees himself as a demon. This is the thing. It is the nature of bhakti that such qualities like humility, they, they naturally arise. Uh, just a few verses away from the one that I quoted from the fifth canto, we find that famous verse, yes yasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana, etc. And all the good qualities, all, de all the devas, and their good qualities, they reside in a devotee. And there the commentaries explain that why do the devas stay in the devotees whereas they're very transitory in the non-devotees. This is a very interesting point. Because the devas, they're obliged to administer your karma for some time only. They, they have to do it. It's, it's their job, so to speak. So when dealing, when, when giving good qualifications, temporary material qualifications to the non-devotees, they're doing it only as a matter of duty, but as soon as they're no longer obliged to do that, they're out. <laughs> they go, you see. But when they come across a saintly person, they appreciate that this person has taken to bhakti so much that they, they're not very much inclined to leave. They like to stay around because they want that devotee's association themselves. They think that we're just demigods, very highly placed as a, res as a result of our judicious karma in the past, but we're not pure like this. We want to get his association. Therefore, the, good qu the devas and their good qualities stay within the heart of a devotee. So humility is one of those great qualifications that decorate a pure devotee like Prahlad Maharaj. That's why he's repeatedly giving this example to us, so that we can get it, <laughs> and get the message. That we, we have to think of ourselves as very fallen and lowly, but we have to glorify other devotees as, as much as possible. Is that okay? <laughs> I, I, can you repeat it again? Yes. Okay, what I can tell you about this is that we're talking about absolute truth here. Now, for your information, absolute truth is absolutely subjective. <laughs> Chew on that for a while. We can, you know, at maybe next week we can discuss it. But the point is, <laughs> no, but this is the fact. The devotee always sees his own position as very fallen and lowly. For him, that is absolute truth. But for everyone else, it is not. This is, this is called achintya bheda bheda tattva. And if, it, if we choke on it, then we just have to recognize that there's lots more coming. <laughs> Because at every step of the way, we come across this brick wall of achinja shakti and how to deal with it. The same person sees himself as fallen, and he's right. <laughs> but the, same, the other people sees that person as a great Mahatma, and they're also correct. This is simply achinja. You cannot have any answer for this within the realm of logic. The answer is within the realm of surrender, devotional service, and Personal experience, personal experience means subjective experience. Yaswanubhava. Yaswanubhava lakhila shruti saramekam. Swanubhava means your own subjective experience. That's, that is the only way that we can ever experience Krishna consciousness, it's subjectively. That's how it is. Is that okay? I don't know if I can say anything more than that. Yes. Okay, but this is another class. So get. Put the microphone behind you. <laughs> uh, what is the question exactly? Yes. And if you share, somebody else will also become 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't share knowledge, then you become envious of others. And if you do share knowledge, then others become envious of you, correct? Th therefore, he says, this is the nature of the world. These, these people are here, I said. These people are here, you have to tolerate. More tolerant than a tree, more humble than a blade of grass. Giving honor to others, not expecting any honor in return. This is how we chant. Is that okay? Uh, Saranga Thakur had a question or a comment. <coughs> there are envious persons are everywhere. <laughs> yes. When he died, he was informed by his witness that that person has died. And Dr. Siddha Shushit Prabhupada's reply was, India I lost all of my best friend. Other witness said, Prabhupada said, I was praying to the Lord to be. So how we can understand this point? I didn't get the last part. Prabhupada said, Mr. Naya when he came, Prabhupada was informed. Yes. He said, I was praying to the Lord. Yeah, so what is the question? He's saying that Shri Bhakti Siddhanta, when the envious man died, uh. I lost my good friend. Uh -huh. He was teaching me how. Uh -huh. Yes. And yet we have a problem. Yes. Both yeah, both. Bo how do we uh -huh, now I understand. Both, of, both attitudes are correct, even though they're opposite. <laughs> do you want some more Achintya Shakti? The fact of the matter is that a saintly person, sometimes he's harder than a thunderbolt, sometimes he's softer than a rose. Just to give you a further illustration, Srila Prabhupada tells a story also. Uh, when he was a householder in his house, he found in his bed a shiny rope. <laughs> what happens if you see a rope that's shiny? <laughs> so it was a snake. And Srila Prabhupada alerted the servants what to do. So Prabhupada said, take the snake outside and just throw it somewhere else. He didn't want to kill the snake. You see? Unfortunately, Prabhupada said, he thinks, he suspects, he, did, he doesn't know, but he suspects that they took the snake out and killed it somewhere. Because Modeta Sadhura Pivrishtika Sarvahatya. But just see, the exact opposite. Srila Prabhupada didn't want to kill the snake. Whether this was before he had that experience in, in Chaitanya Mantra or not, I don't know. But uh, even in the same person, uh, sometimes with one person, Prabhupada could be very, very kind, and another person would be very, very harsh. Because the nature of a great elevated Mahatma of Srila Prabhupada's stature is that he has empathy, full empathy. What does empathy mean? Atma upam yena sarvatra samam pashati yorjana. Krishna says, I consider the best yogi that person who can really understand what's in another person's heart in any circumstance. We can't see like this. We can't see like this. But someone like Srila Prabhupada can see. And therefore, if a person he perceives to be envy, then he, will, he may be harsh with that person. A person in whom he perceives a small degree of Potential, then he may be kind to that person. How it works is a little difficult. Gana karmano gatihi. This is a way of action. It's not easy to understand. Is that okay? You had a question. <coughs> Prior to Lord Nisimdev's appearance, uh, Radhakaman worshipped Lord Vishnu, like a form of Lord Vishnu. Prahlad. Yeah. Okay. Like as we know from Shlomo, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Ekadi. So, and in fact, we get the description, you know, from that. Radhakaman worshipped Lord Nisimdev. So, who, which form, like, is he worshipping eternally? He's eternally worshipping Lord Vishnu in the form of Lord Narasimha. It's like, you know, ha, ha, this is Nitya Leela Hoti Hai, no? This, Nitya Leela is always going on, but 
it seems like it's new. Even to them it seems like it's new. Vasudev is walking across the Yamuna carrying Krishna in a basket. He doesn't know the script. He doesn't know what's going to happen, but he knows what he has to do because it's, it's pre-programmed. We all have our eternal sarup with relation to the Lord and we worship in that capacity. And maybe it manifests sometimes as prakarta, Jiva Goswami describes, and sometimes aprakarta. Manifest sometimes, not manifest other times. So it's like this. That's one thing. And then another thing is that even when it's prakarta, according to kalpa bheda, in different kalpas, the, the Lord plays out his pastimes a little differently. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Rupa Goswami writes the very interesting uh, comment in uh, Logu Bhagavatamritam that in some kalpas, Lord Narasingadeva appears as a cat. <laughs> So, you know, here's a nice analogy given by Giriraj Swami to explain this. When you go into a supermarket, um, like the, for those from Delhi, Fab India, <laughs> you can go to any Fab India store and you'll find the same stock and it's presented pretty much in the same order as well, but the physical facility of a different building is, is, is going to be slightly different each time. So, therefore, you find in the Puranas different, apparently contradictory or conflicting accounts of how the Lord appears and performs his pastimes because of different, slightly different universes. The universes are constantly in flux. They are, the universes only respond to the des collective desires of all living entities who fill them. That is the purpose. So, each universe, every creation, it will be a little bit different. And because the universe is different, the pastimes have to be tweaked accordingly. This is the point. So sometimes Prahlad is worshipping Lord in uh, Narasingha Dev Rup, and sometimes in his mind he's thinking of the Lord in all the <laughs> We don't know how. Maybe that's the easy answer to the question. But it's understood that he's eternally a devo devotee of Lord Narasingha Dev. Is that okay? <laughs> Just keep chant honey, chanting Hare Krishna and you'll understand it through experience. That's the answer. All right, I'm going to stop here because it's late. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.